Either way, you know, I mean, I'm I'm all game. I'm, I I want to fight the best guys in the world and test myself and see where I stack up with them. Um, and so, yeah, I think Davy Grant's a, a great first opponent to start moving in that direction. Christopher DeSantiago with MMA Islander. School is back in session for tough 31 runner-up Cody Durandegay Gibson. Next assignment is Davy Grant on March 23rd. Cody, how's it going today? Doing well. Enjoying uh, this sunny California weather while it lasts because I think a storm's coming. But today it feels like summer, which is a nice – it hasn't been like this. So the fact that we got this today, um, trying to stay outside as much as possible. Awesome, man. Uh, is this the longest training camp of your career? Uh, no. I think my last fight, actually, I had, you know, I mean, we didn't know the exact date of the finale, but we had a general idea of when the show ended. So we kind of knew it would be sometime soon after the show ended. So even before I found out about the finale date, we were already prepping. So uh, the last one was the longest one. But this one, yeah, it's you know, knowing 10, 12, 14 weeks before a fight, um, it's nice, you know, because the last run I had in the UFC, I was thinking back about it, and I don't think I ever had a fight with more than six weeks' notice out of the four that I had in my first run in the organization. So now I'm two for two with uh, plenty of notice. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I like having it, you know, and um especially I, I had a surgery after the fight and i had a couple of injuries i was dealing with so I had to be out of the gym um for about a month there and uh just getting my allowing my body to get reacclimated to the training before like jumping into like full-on training camp was uh it's, it was nice to have that little buffer zone uh how hard has it been to balance uh you know being a teacher and being a fighter especially in the second ufc run uh, I mean, it's always a challenge, you know, um, it was a challenge whether I'm in, you know, gloves with uh, the letters UFC on them or they have different letters on them. It's it's always a challenge. But, um, you know, I keep reminding myself that I've done it before and, uh, you know, I, I could do it again. Um, you know, I I think as we'll see where things are when the school year ends this year and make a decision on whether I want to go back into the classroom next year or not. But, uh, you know, I, I wasn't going to like leave the school high and dry in the middle of this year and be like, Oh, I got signed to the UFC. So peace out, you know, and like, you don't have a teacher. And so I just, you know, I, I stuck around and I'm finishing out my year and then we just play it by ear. We're going to assess and see where I'm at, at in June and then make a decision about next year. But, you know, you make the best of it, you know, and, I'm getting in two training sessions a day um, early in the morning and, and then after work. So, I mean, I think most guys train twice a day typically. So um, I don't feel like I'm not getting the time I need. It's just, uh, I don't have, I don't have the luxury of going home and resting afterwards. Like uh, some of these guys, I, every night is like a jigsaw puzzle of putting together all those different pieces I need for the next day because I when I leave the house I don't come back until late so I've got to have like three or four different wardrobes planned out and make sure I've got soap and deodorant and towel and vitamins and food and you know it's just a it's a process you know awesome man that's great to hear and uh you know when your coach Michael Chandler came onto the UFC he said I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Uh, heading into your second UFC run, like you kind of have that mindset or like what, what is your kind of mindset heading into this next UFC run? Um, yeah, I mean, I think bonuses are definitely something that, you know, at the end of the day, like every, in every situation in the cage is it's calculating your risk and reward. Um, and I do feel like I'm at a stage in my career in my life and, and what I want to accomplish still in the sport that my risk and reward might have might be different than it was even a few years ago, you know, um, where I'm willing to risk more uh, to have a bigger reward, you know, and uh, bonuses are important to me. I, I feel like obviously winning fights is important so I could, you know, have a, a, a longer run the second time and stick around. Um, 
but I think, you know, financially and personally and like personal financial goals that I have left in the sport, you know, bonuses are going to be a big part of that. So, um, when I, when the name came across the desk and it was Davey Grant, you know, um, I knew that he's going to deliver. So, uh, they, 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 they match this up, I think on purpose. And, uh, now it's just uh, time to train and then get ready to go do our job. I believe David Grant's like right outside of the top 15 rankings. I believe he's ranked number 24 on Tapology. Uh, what do you think a win over a guy like David Grant, somebody who's proven himself over the years does for your career? Yeah, I think, it, you know, it definitely is a, a, a major statement. Um, it had they, had they thrown someone at me who was coming off the contender series or who was one and one in the UFC or something to that extent, I don't think, it really does moves me too far along in the in the process of trying to get get a number next to my name. Um, but you know, Davy Grant, especially if you go out, you get a finish over Davy Grant, and you and you have a, a stellar performance. I think suddenly you got, kind of get thrust into you know where I could be a fight away from getting a, an opportunity to get a, a ranking. You know, so um, yeah, it was not only the stylistically did I really like the matchup, but uh, you know, I think when there's something at stake and, you know, the the carrot that's being dangled, so to speak, in front of your face is a little bit bigger, um, that definitely, you know, adds to the motivation of the whole thing is a win over Davey Grant, uh, who's a, a guy who's been in the organization for over a decade and uh, is a pretty well-respected guy for his toughness and grit. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely would be a feather in my cap and, and propel me to hopefully a, a bigger fight and a, and a bigger opportunity. At this stage of your career with, you know, the carrot being dangled and, you know, you may be getting a, a ranked opponent after this one, you know, not to look too far ahead in the future. Do you believe a title run is in store for Cody Gibson at this stage of your career? I don't know, man. I was, you know, you never say never. Um, my buddy Josh Emmett's still, still lingering around the top five, no matter how many times they try to throw him out, you know, um, and we were college roommates and he's still doing it. So if he can do it, you know, he motivates me when I see him out there putting people's lights out like he did his last time out. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I know it's not conventional. I know it's not supposed to happen at 36 years old that you're making a run toward a title in the UFC. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I've got a lot of work ahead of me to even think about that. Like step one is to beat Davy Grant, you know, impressively. Uh, and then, we go on from there and try to get a number next to the name. And then, you know, you never know, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, crazy things happened. We had uh, the people's champion, Sean Strickland there for a minute, you know, nobody would have said he would ever hold the goals, you know? And, and so this sport's so unpredictable, uh, never say never, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm here to, you know, put on good fights and fun fights, exciting fights, get cash in as much money as I can before it's too late. And, um, you know, if, if a title is in my future, that'd be freaking awesome. But if it's not, and I, I could still, you know, hang my hat on a great career and, and hopefully some financial re rewards at, at the end of it. So, um, you know, either way, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm all game. I'm, I, I want to fight the best guys in the world and test myself and see where I stack up with them. Um, and so, yeah, I think Davey Grant's a, a great first opponent to start moving in that direction. Have you been... Uh... Have you been watching a lot of tape on him uh, during this point of training camp? And what do you see from him? Like, uh, what what are some things that you need to look out for when fighting Davey Grant? Yeah, I'm a big, big, big proponent of watching film. Um, and I like, you know, like my coaches will focus on his last few fights. Um, they'll watch maybe his last three or four fights and really, I mean, really break them down. Whereas, and I like to do that also, but. Uh, I, I personally like to go back and find the earliest fight I can. You know, I like to go from their first fight I could find and then just watch one by one as they go forward in their career. Um, I just like to see their evolution, you know, like where they started, what were their weaknesses, how they, you know, showed improvements over time. Um, and it's just a part of my process that I enjoy doing. Uh, I like to get to know my opponents, like, almost to the degree that when I see him in Vegas, in this case, um, 
there's just not that unfamiliarity about it. Like I've, I almost feel like I know them, even though I don't know them, you know, like I've heard their voice so many times. I've seen interviews from them. I've watched their fight so many times that, you know, I know their movements as well as any of my training partners, you know, and, and that's something that's, you know, when you, when you train with someone can, and I come from a small gym, so we have a small tight knit team. I train with the same guys pretty consistently on a daily basis. And you start to, you know, read their habits and their movement patterns and you know you both do that over the over the course of time well with someone you've never fought or trained with obviously you can't do that but i could watch a lot of film and notice movement patterns so that when i get in there and those movement patterns occur you know i'm not um i have answers to those questions you know it was a long road to get back to the ufc but you know now we're here but uh between your first and second ufc run like what was the most gratifying win or moment you had on the regional scene Um, that's a good question. I, I think the John Dawson fight was probably the highlight of it, you know, um, only because I, you know, I didn't know if I could beat him, you know, I, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know if I could beat a guy that hadn't lost, who had beaten a lot of good guys and, uh, you know, left the UFC, not because of, he was losing a lot of fights or anything, but, um, you know, was a guy who obviously fought for a title and, uh known as one of the fastest guys in the sport uh knockout power all you know all those all those attributes that he had and um that was one of the first camps with my team here at the pit that we really i i felt like the game plan we had going into it was successful and it, it gave me a level of confidence not only myself because i beat a guy of his caliber but in my coaches you know and like hey the game plan they devised for this very tricky uh, southpaw, super fast opponent, it worked. And so, you know, just believing in the process that we go through as a team. And, um, uh, you know, that one definitely helped boost the confidence for not, like I said, not only myself, but everybody around me too, that we're, we're onto something, you know? For sure, for sure, Cody. And uh, before I get into this next question, I just want to commend you on the heart and and the heart that you showed in your fight against uh, Bracketona, man, you really left it on the, on the line. You dug deep. Uh, was that the most intense moment or fight that you've had in your career thus far? Oh, uh, no. Nah. I mean, I mean, yeah, it was in some way, I guess. I don't know. I just didn't have any fear, you know? Like, I just didn't. Like I wish we could have fought another twenty minutes, thirty minutes. It should have. It was the kind of fight where I could have just we could have just kept fighting. Um, I would have I would have recovered, you know. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was it was a rough one as far as <laughs> afterwards. Uh, it was definitely one of those that you're like, why am I doing this, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a it was a good one. Um, there were things about it that I look back on. I'm like, man, I could have, had I fought differently, would the results have been different? Um, was my strategy the best strategy, you know? And I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, um, kudos to Brad, man. He's tough. He didn't break. I thought I would break him. I did everything I could to break him. I, I've broken a lot of guys in the gym by walking them down and, and just never letting off the gas. And, and he met he met it with head on and and dug deep himself and uh, I might not he might not be my best friend and uh, personally but I gotta respect him as a fighter and uh, and yeah you know it, it was a good experience for me it was a lot of fun um, and it was fun to reintroduce myself to the UFC and MMA fans that might not know who I am uh, the landscape of the sport has changed so much since my last UFC run to this one uh, social media wasn't what it is today back then. And so, uh, yeah, it was kind of a, you know, I think cool to reintroduce myself to, to all the new fans out there. And, uh, you know, at the time of your last UFC run, uh, we had movies come out like a uh, warrior and here comes the boom. And those are movies that, uh, really remind me of you as, you know, balancing, uh, your life as a fighter, as well as a teacher, uh, which movie did you like better, uh, warrior or here comes the boom? I mean, there's, there's very different movies, you know, I mean, here comes the boom was funny and quirky and silly and you know, all the above, but, and it was cool to see some of the cameos in that one. Uh, but warriors definitely uh, one I've watched several times and uh, yeah, it's a good one. 
man. And uh, for your next fight, uh, what's going to be your walkout song? I, I obviously know that you like, uh, what is it, Bad Moon Rising by... Uh... You know, usually, uh, that, I might be going back to that one. I haven't... Um... Usually nice. I'll run, I'll ride, I'll ride with the song until I lose, um, until I lose with that song. Uh, that's kind of always been my thing throughout over thirty fights now. Is I'll ride with the song, and as long as I'm winning, then the song remains. Um, and I never lost with that one. I think uh, I was on a nice little streak, and then when I went over to Khabib's promotion and fought for Eagle FC, uh, we didn't get to pick a walkout song because of whatever the streaming service was. It was probably like copyright issues, and so it was just like some generic music. And I lost that fight, and then I never went back to uh, Bad Moon Rising. So, uh, and then I saw Jim Miller came out to it the other day for his big fight, and I was like, man, maybe I need to go back to Bad Moon Rising. You know, I'm still on a, I'm still, I'm still on a streak. I'm still undefeated with that song. So, uh, I think that might be the direction I'm heading. Hey, I mean, who knows if you have that song for each one of your UFC fights? I mean, that could be your uh, good luck charm, right? It could be, and I'm not that. Uh, you know, superstitious or anything, but I don't know why the whole walkout song thing. It's always been my, and then it, if I find one, I really like, I'm like, I got to win this fight. Cause I want to keep this song, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I'm not sure if you watch the office, but I think Michael Scott is like, I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm about like he is. Awesome. man. And then one last question I had for you, uh, between your coaches, uh, you know, with Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor, like, when are they going to fight, man? Do you think they're ever going to fight someday? Yeah, I think they're going to. I I mean, I've heard some rumors, you know. I, I know some. there's a lot of rumors out there circulating. I've heard talk about weight classes being, you know, changed and uh, introdu the introduction of new weight classes and adjustments to weight classes. And, you know, I don't know how – I know there's a lot of rumors, but, uh, you know, until it comes out of Dana's mouth, you know, and we hear him announce it, I think we're all still wondering. But I think if if that goes through, if that rumor turns out to be even partially true, it makes a lot of sense, you know, that they would be fighting for like an inaugural 165 pound title at 300. That's the kind of fight that people want to tune into. And uh, especially if you've got a new belt on the line and, you know, there's if you if you if you stack that with a Leon fight at like 175 for a new belt. I mean, you know, there's a lot of options there if you add a weight class and, and they've talked forever about um, kind of the problem that so many of these guys have between 55s and 85s. And, you know, the 15 pounds as opposed to 10 pounds and how some guys are too small for this weight and too big for this one. And they're kind of stuck in the middle guys. And uh I don't know if that ends up happening. It's just a rumor I've heard with other people, you know, along with the fans. But uh, I would love to see it. You know, I'd love, to, I'd love, I'd love for that to be to come to fruition. I think Mike's waited long enough. You know, he's there's got to be the, uh, the the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for him. And you know, I think it's been public enough where it's like if he's got to get the shot. You know, he's got to get the opportunity at this point, um, or it'll be the dirtiest, uh, the dirtiest move. I've seen in a while if he doesn't, you know, so uh, I'm hoping UFC 300. I know they were talking about June for International Fight Week, but it was kind of weird how they announced that and then or they didn't. Connor announced that, but Dana still hasn't. So, yeah, I don't know. I think there's still a lot of moving parts and uh, I'm just hoping they they get to they get to do it. And uh, I'm excited for for Mike. And, you know, I think. I think he's going to get the job done. I think he's getting Connor at the right time. Um, you know, I don't know if Connor, you know, when he, the Connor McGregor that knocked out Jose Aldo, the Connor McGregor that knocked out Eddie Alvarez, that guy doesn't exist anymore. And I think people, people, people look at the highlights and they remember it and they think that that's still him. And I just don't see it anymore. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I hope it. I hope it happens at three hundred. I hope that's the the main event that they're waiting to announce. I think that's all the questions I had for you, Cody. It's always uh, great talking to you. I believe. I don't think I've done any more interviews. Um, or I think the most interviews I've done with a fighter probably goes to you. So congratulations. Uh, best of luck on March twenty third. Is there anything that you want to say to the fans out there watching? 
No, I just appreciate the support. You know, I kind of feel like this second run I'm having is due to the fans. Um, you know, Dana said himself, he's like, you know, everyone's blowing me up about signing this, you know, signing both guys after that fight. And uh, I don't know if it would have happened had the fans not, you know, bombarded his uh, Twitter feed or X feed or Instagram feed or whatever the case is. So I feel like I'm uh, I'm fighting with right there where the fans are with me. So, uh, yeah, looking at to go out and, and, uh, and, and have a hell of a performance and upset Davy Grant and keep the train rolling, you know.